Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice factorial equation. We have x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial equals w factorial. And we're going to be solving this problem for positive integers. Or I should say non-negative integers because 0 factorial is also well defined in that sense. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. So we're kind of adding three different factorials. The question is, does that become a factorial? If this equation has no solutions, then at the end we're going to say, hey, there are no numbers that satisfy this. Okay, but let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. So I'm going to set a different variable here for the maximum of these values. What, now, why is that important? Because if I can compare the maximum uh, of a number to a bunch of numbers, then uh, I can kind of make some uh, comparisons because we, we don't know which one is greater. And if they're all equal, obviously the maximum is going to be equal to one of the numbers. That's not a problem at all. So let u equal max of x, y, z. So whatever the largest number is, I'm going to call that u. Obviously, u is equal to x or y or z or all of them. So now in this case, obviously, we know that u needs to be greater than or equal to 1. Now in this case, why am I excluding 0? Because if u is equal to 0, that means they're all 0, right? Let's take a look at it. What happens if u is equal to 0? Then all of these are going to be 0 because 0 is the largest. Therefore, um, this is only defined for 0. And 0 factorial plus 0 factorial plus 0 factorial, as you know, is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3. But as you know, uh, there is no... Uh, factorial equal to 3. So we don't really have a solution for u equals 0. So that's why u needs to be greater than or equal to 1. And obviously, since we're adding uh, non-zero factorials, uh, we can safely say that the u is going to be less than w because I'm going to be adding something non-zero to it. Great. So in this case, since uh, u uh, is less than w, if I decrease w by 1, there's a chance that they're going to be equal. So I can safely say that since u is less than w, u is less than or equal to w minus 1, okay? In case their difference is 1, uh, then, uh, you know, it's just going to be uh, 1. So it's going to work. Anyways, so now here's what I'm going to be looking at. And this might be coming out of the blue, and we're using a blue pen here. But uh, let's start exploring something like this, w times u factorial. Now, why am I looking into this? Because u is the maximum, and if I can kind of... Um, multiply that the u factorial by w then I can go ahead and uh, compare it to something in w because I do have this uh, nice inequality okay you'll see in a little bit why this works so since u is less than uh, or equal to w minus 1 u factorial is going to be less than or equal to w minus 1 factorial and if you multiply both sides of that inequality by w then you're going to get that this product is less than or equal to w minus w minus 1 factorial. This is why starting with w times u factorial is very important. And how would you come up with this? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You just have to try it. Okay. And as you know, w times w minus 1 factorial is equal to w factorial, or some people call this omega, I think, right? But I'm going to call it w. Anyways, uh, because the rest is taking care of w minus 1 factorial. And we do know that w factorial can be written as x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial. Great. So now, what do we have? We have that w times u factorial. Let's go ahead and write it in a kind of nicer way. w times u factorial uh, is uh, less than or equal to, you know, w factorial, which was written as x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial. So I'm going to do something interesting here. Since u is the maximum of x, y, z, if all of these are equal to u, then you're basically adding u factorial plus u factorial plus u factorial, which is going to give you 3 times u factorial. Obviously, uh, x, y, z can uh, be less than that. So we can safely say that this sum is going to be less than or equal to 3 times u factorial because uh, 
all of these factorials are less than or equal to u factorial. Oops, I wrote u prime, not u prime. It's supposed to be u factorial. So therefore, we can safely say that. Now, this is the trickiest part because, because now we have this and we have that, and we can directly compare them using the transitive property of inequalities. Great. So this gives us w times u factorial. Oh, I, I also wrote u prime here. I apologize. So we can safely say that w times u factorial is less than or equal to 3 times u factorial. Well, this kind of gives us something real nice because it, uh, we can divide both sides by u factorial. As you know, u factorial, uh, oops, I keep writing u prime, I don't know why. But anyways, u factorial can never equal 0. Therefore, we can divide both sides by u factorial, and that gives us w is less than or equal to 3. Yay, awesome, beautiful. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at possible w values. We know that w is a positive number, and so on and so forth. So what happens if w is equal to See, some kind of writing messy. If w is equal to 3, then from here we get x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial is equal to 3 factorial, which is 6. And obviously from here, each of these numbers is going to be 2 because 2 factorial equals 2, and 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. In this case, we get this nice solution. They're all equal to 2. Great. What happens if w is equal to 2? then we get x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial is equal to is equal to w factorial and since w is equal to 2 that is going to equal 2 factorial which is equal to 2 awesome now do we get some solutions from here let's find out okay great so now we have three factorials added and that needs to make 2 but is that possible well unfortunately it's not possible at all because if you think about 0 factorial, 0 factorial is equal to 1, 1 factorial is equal to 1, 2 factorial is equal to 2, so on and so forth. The factorials get larger and larger, right? So actually all the factorials are positive, so minimum something factorial is 1. And if you just add 1 plus 1 plus 1, you get a 3, you don't get a 2. Therefore, uh, this basically implies that x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial is greater than or equal to 3. But we, we're trying to solve this equation where it is equal to 2, but that's quite impossible, which means that we have no solution for w equals 2. What about w equals 1? Well, do you think, is there going to be any solution if we didn't have any solutions for w equals 2? Are we going to have any solution for x factorial plus y factorial plus z factorial equals 1? And the answer is no. There are no solutions for w equals 1 either. Therefore, the only solution that we have for this is going to be written as follows. x, y, z, w. Basically, each of x, y, z can be 2 and w needs to equal 3, as you can see from here. All right, awesome. So that implies that the only quadruple that satisfies this is going to be 2, 2, 2, 3. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.